So I completely blew it in qualifying. I was one tenth up on the rest of the field in the first two rounds and then uh, wore out my tires for the last round and uh, didn't get on the pole. So we're gonna rectify that problem hopefully very quickly here as we go three wide, but Kevin Harvick slipped to the inside in the Bush light car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. qualified on the pole as we get moved out of the way a little bit by Cousin Carl Edwards there. Oh, we're going to get into the wall. Well, there goes the, uh, the no wrecking streak, which I managed to go exactly one race not wrecking. Well, I guess we didn't bring out the yellow. But it's kind of tough to make it work around the outside here at Martinsville Speedway. you got to do it all on the exit of the corner. And as you can see, we just got up into the wall just a little bit. Obviously, there's a long, way, long, long way to go. And a lot of people were predicting my demise in this round of the chase. But I don't know. We'll see. Harvick has gone to the lead. But I think Harvick got eliminated at Talladega. If I'm not mistaken. Still we'll have to wait and see. Again, I forgot to check the points. I did check the points, but I didn't check the points. I know Kurt Busch is one of the drivers we're racing. So it's advantageous to accidentally, and I mean accidentally, I did not actually intentionally do that. Accidentally run into him there. And move him up the track quite a bit. Keselowski, I know, got eliminated. Dale Jr., I believe, is still in. Jimmy Johnson is still in. So I think we've got Three out of the four guys just ahead of us who are still in with the shot in the chase. So it's uh, advantageous to us to make passes here. Because the last thing I want is to really have to fight at Phoenix to get in. Because I feel like, as we're just going to bounce off Jimmy Johnson, I wasn't very good at Phoenix. I've never really been good at Phoenix. As we completely wrecked Jimmy Johnson there. Thank God this isn't NASCAR Heat 2 because this would be all of the rivals already but we're just making our way up here fourth place not too bad Keselowski gonna bounce off the wall and that's gonna give me the third position hopefully here and down into turn three yes indeed so give me that and we'll keep the beer wagon behind us and now set off in pursuit of Dale Jr. and then on to uh, Kevin Harvick who for whatever reason has a rocket ship in that bush light Chevrolet right now and he's kind of pulling away from the rest of us just a little bit as we've got to be very careful about that pit entry that has screwed me in the past when I thought I had a victory locked up here at Martinsville as we get in behind Dale Jr. again got to be very careful as well as the of the curb as we almost got into the wall there lost a little bit of time to Brad K get the car wound down and there goes Keselowski to the inside. Couldn't quite get me there. And actually, I got a really good run off of turn number four. And, you know, try to sneak in behind Dale Jr. Not going to quite work that time around. But I think, well, now we've definitely got traffic, too. So that is going to really factor into this. As Dale Jr. is very slow off of turn four, we smack the back of him. Let's see if we can get down here into turn number one. Well, that's a... Absolute dump right there, no doubt about it. And Keselowski going to the outside, or the inside. We're the outside of Keselowski. And actually pull right in front of him, not quite clear him, though. And Harvick looks like he's struggling in traffic, so if we can clear Keselowski, get a nice clear run here into turn one. Oh, no, Keselowski's going to come back. A little bit of argy-bargy there. Keselowski back through. But we're going to trap him behind Ryan Ellis. He isn't going to try to. Well, that's a... Spin, and that's a track blocker. Probably going to be a yellow. Okay, sorry, Brad. That was definitely my fault. Not going to make him feel any better about it, but um, I'll accept blame for that one. Well, Kevin Harvick, and I don't want to pass cars to the inside in turn number three. I feel like I've learned that lesson in the past. And Keselowski has just gotten right, right side around as we uh, have Eric Jones very loose into turn number one. We still haven't quite gotten around Kevin Harvick yet, but it's gonna be very, very heavy traffic here right now. Oh, oh no. Sorry, Kevin. Did we wreck him? No, we didn't, but we do pass him for the lead. Wow, that was, um, 
He brake checked, I swear. Boy, this is sloppy. This is sloppy. We just put Busher in the wall and then he ran into <laughs> Kevin Harvick. Oh dear. This is a sloppy, sloppy race. This is going to be the USAC comments for sure in this video. But anyway, we are actually pulled out now out in front. And now time to just start lapping these guys as quickly as we can. And there's a car peeling off into the pits. It's a white car. It's not Keselowski, it's Trevor Bain, who is not in the chase contention anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Whoa, that was close. I hate that curb. That curb is nasty. They can pick you up and spit you out. Miller. And David Reagan just trying to get around the outside. That is no bueno. Miller. And we're just going to get her right down Off next way. to the yellow line, the yellow curb. That ain't a line. That's a line painted on a curb, I should say. And now in heavy traffic as Brad Keselowski desperately tries to stay on the lead lap. I think he's going to get lapped here in a bit. Or he's going to try to Kenseth me into turn number one, which is always a possibility here at Martinsville. As we get down, possibly in between Greg Biffle and Mike Lynette. Yes, we will. As we get around the red and yellow cars. And out of the outside of Annette the Threat. And pass him. Just breaking just a little bit into turn number three. And now hanging it around the outside of Austin Dillon. Sweeping down to the inside of Ryan Blaney. And I jumped into the back of Keselowski once again. So Keselowski, he's really going to be upset with me for sure. And the game is lagging just a little bit. Does that mean we have a yellow? No, but I'm going to hit Keselowski again. Oh, Brad, I'm so sorry. And he's going to have trouble, big trouble, getting into turn one. Well, I saved you, Keselowski. Can I, can I get a, can I get a, uh, a reprimand for that one? Or a reprieve for that one? But, uh, yeah, it's funny how the bump drafting works better at Martinsville than it does at uh, Talladega. Miller. I do think that's kind of funny. So we're already up to retired Scott, who's not having a bad day here in 24th. Oh, but he almost had a bad day because, well, he's going to have a bad day because he cut down in front of me. Screw you, retired Scott. What are you doing, son? Miller. Son, I am disappointed. All right, so down into turn one. Retired Scott going to try to go around the inside. And not quite. We're going to pull away down the back straight away. We should be quite clear of retired Scott now, but he's going to take a, a look down to the inside. But he's not going to quite get there, and we're going to get a really good run on Paul Menard off of turn number four, possibly stick it down the inside of him, and Miller. indeed we are going to maybe a little bit of a bouncing off, off of him, but we managed to do it. And now setting our sights on Matt Benedetto with some clear track as well, which is going to be nice for lap times for sure. As Clint Boyer has moved up into second place, I think he was just eliminated out of the chase in uh, Talladega, so we don't have to worry about him from a perspective of the chase as we get down into turn number three don't hit that curb David do not hit that curb and now a very clear looking track as we get around to Benedetto and cross over to 100 laps to go we just keep the Benedetto behind and now on the throttle very nice nice clear track I like I like the look of that that's a that's a welcome sight and what kind of lap times are we doing I'm going to look at the lap lot. time gauge, and that was actually my fastest lap. I was wondering, indeed, once we have no more traffic to deal with, suddenly the lap times really start to come down. I think we're really going to be really quick on fresh tires once we get back out after the first pit stop. Probably a while away at this point, I would imagine, 18 laps. But actually, the engine is damaged. Don't know how I managed to do that, but apparently it is. Well... Oh, that was just that was just pathetically getting into the wall there. I was trying to think of the engine damage and what I what it me meant to the race. I guess it really doesn't mean anything except for no more wheel spin really because <laughs> of lack of horsepower. But if there's one track where you don't really need horsepower, it's Martinsville. It's all about the uh, cornering speed. 
and we have got that in droves. As we get around Ryan Ellis very easily, I think for the second time. We're back in the uh, the lap cars once again, the second uh, run through the lap cars. We are going to be seeing a lot of these guys, I would imagine, throughout the day. As Tony Stewart looking very uh, wide, trying to get around the outside of Eric Jones and actually putting himself into the wall just a little bit, the thing I just did a couple laps ago. We're going to go three wide into turn number one. And make it stick, but Bobby Labonte going to go very slow. We're just going to run him all the way down the straightaway. Still there. Clear and now around the outside of Eric Jones, trying to get him anyway, and he's going to go slow off of turn four, so we'll get him. Clint Boyer's actually managed to close down in on me since uh, I've been kind of screwing around in traffic, but again, that's not something to worry about. That's the ebb and flow of racing and traffic. As Casey Kane makes a pretty bold move down to the inside of Chris Busher and actually pulled it off as he's trying to stay on the lead lap. We got into the back of Kane as we've got cars getting together there in turn one. Thankfully, nobody wrecked yet, though now it looks like we've got a spin because the game was lagging and there's a lot of smoke. And yeah, that is Martin Truex Jr. backwards. Hey, where's the yellow NASCAR? Um. Okay, well that's this is gonna be this is gonna be one of those races, isn't it? Well, we know we have to avoid the outside of turn number four now, apparently. Are they still gonna be piled up over here? I'm gonna stay to the outside just in case. Nope. Okay, well there was BS yellows and now there are just no yellows. I guess NASCAR has two extremes. Either go, well, as I've wrecked. Uh, AJ Allmendinger for no reason. Sorry, AJ. There's trouble in turn like I said, there's extremes, I guess. They're either going to call all the yellows or none of the yellows. Whatever. We'll keep going. 90 laps to go. I wonder if we can lap the field. If this goes green the whole way, I think I could probably do it. But Clint Boyer is staying up there. I'll give him credit. He's really come on strong here. The yellow's and out. there is the yellow. There is the yellow. We've got 15 laps left of fuel, but most of the lead lap cars are pitting. I'm trying to think if I want to trap everybody a lap down or not. Uh, I'm going to pit. I'm going to pit with the leaders, stay on sequence. All right, and here we go. We're restarting 13th because I had to do a lot of repairs, as you saw, or as you would have known that I needed to do. And it looks like uh, the Smithfield car is on the pole for the green flag, and we've already gotten into the back of the flurry before the uh, race even really gets back going. And let's try to be kind of kind to everybody. Don't know where everybody's kind of shook out here, as Chase Elliott's going fairly slow there in the pizza pizza car. As so we're going to be a three wide off of the corner. And we get around Logano, who just completely felt like a rock there for some reason. And terrible, terrible, terrible turn hey, one there for me. We're still running 13th where we were on the restart. Bye bye, Hamlin. Well, that's just what you have to do. I guess Rubbin's racing here at Martinsville. And Kenseth is just going to lose it. I don't even know if I got into him, but uh, he. <laughs> I, I seriously don't think I even touched. Kendrick, but he decided to go a spinning and it looks like guys on old tires are really struggling because Almirola was leading on the restart and he has fallen like a rock right now. Swing around the outside of Chase Elliott and Chase Elliott almost lost it. Almendinger running 37th after I wrecked him. Actually I just realized Almendinger was probably the cause for the yellow quite possibly because he's got a lot of damage to the back of his car that I don't remember seeing before as we get underneath Clint Boyer who was running so so fast in the early part of this race and now Keselowski going to the inside trying to get one of his laps back but he's going <laughs> to lock the brakes up and we're going to try to go around the outside of Eric Almirola for 7th which we will be able to do but a lot of these lap cars are going quite fast quite good pace for lap cars there I must say then again, a lot of these guys are fast cars that I wrecked or otherwise had issues further back in the pack. And there we 
go to the inside of Keselowski. As the field spreads out a bit, it's going to get a little bit better to be able to pass these guys. As we get underneath Keselowski, finally clear him. And down the back straightaway, trying to get in behind Almendinger. It's just not quite there. As we get off of the corner. And down to the inside. And on the brakes, on the brakes, on the brakes. A little bit of clipping into Almendinger, but off of the corner we go. And now McFlurry. Couldn't quite do it that time around. Maybe just give him a little bit of a shot there. And we're going to get underneath him down on the inside as half the field comes into the pits. So we move up to sixth around McFlurry. And now we're going to chase down Earnhardt for fifth. As Stenhouse is going to be a bit of a pain running in 39th, a lap down, but clearly pretty good pace for a lap car. As actually he's going to try to get to the inside of Dale Jr. That's not going to work out quite as well as he would have hoped. And still more cars peeling off into the pits. We've got Chris Busher now off into the pit lane, and we get a good run on Stenhouse. We should be able to pass him down here in turn one. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes. And actually got a pretty good run off of the corner, all things considered, considering the aggressive entry I had to take to uh, get rid of Stenhouse. And then Junior gets held up by the lap car of De Benedetto. And actually ran my fastest lap of the race in traffic. Wow. Good job, me. But, uh, okay, three cars to go. Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, and Jimmy Johnson. Here's the cars we need to get around. As we get to the outside of Casey Mears. We tried to, but it didn't work. So now Dale Jr. Whoa, whoa. Mears is going way, way too slow. Or I was going way too fast. Or some combination of the two. But regardless, it led to shenanigans. And thankfully, no major mechanical parts are damaged. Just the arrow. But arrow is not as important at Martinsville as uh, horsepower. It's about mechanical grip. As we get down here, three, four wide into turn number three. That was sloppy. And Dale Jr. still the inside. A little bit of contact, but we finally clear him. And now we move up into the second group of lap cars. As I get way, way too deep. Way, way too deep into one and two. So clearly I'm breaking way too late there. Sorry, Casey Mears. It was absolutely my fault now. I'm determined it was absolutely my fault. But now we've got the leaders, and they are stuck in heavy, heavy traffic. And that makes me a little bit confident to be able to take these guys on. Let's see if we can do it. They are three wide all the way through the field. As Kurt, as, uh, I want to say Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick in the Busch car, <laughs> going trying to go four wide. That's not going to work. They're three wide ahead. Again, Harvick going down. Look, that's four wide. That is four wide. That is four wide. No, that's four wide. That is four wide. And here comes... Kurt to the outside. We're just going to wreck Ryan Ellis because screw the, that guy. And Harvick still leads. Or still ahead of me, I should say. And somehow there's still a car ahead of Johnson. So uh, never mind. I guess it's Carl Edwards. And Keselowski moves to the inside. And I'll move to the inside of him. And we're going to spill all the beer. And uh, Dale Jr. is going to be the beneficiary of that. He said spilled beer, and Dale Jr. was right there. Oh, and here they come down to the inside, and Dale Jr. is still trying to get around. He's to the inside now, and we're going to beat and bang down here in turn number three. And can we pass Earnhardt on the outside? Finally, finally we clear Earnhardt. And hopefully now we can say sayonara, Jr., but I wouldn't put it past me to screw up like that and have to beat and bang with Junior some more. Joey Logano to the outside now, and we're going to go three wide with Kurt Busch looking to the inside. And now Dale Junior going slow off of the corner once again. And we reach the halfway mark of the race as Dale Junior 
gets underneath me. So does Kurt Busch and Brad Keselowski, though Keselowski not for position right now. You would assume it will be at some point as we get way, way too hard into the corner once again. But Keselowski going to go slow off of the corner and then around the outside of those guys. And it looks like, is Trevor Bain like stuck in the pit lane? Uh, that's going to potentially be real problems when we get down there. So I'm pretty sure Bain is close to my pit box. Let's take a look as we go by here. Well, we may not get the opportunity as we saw tire smoke up there. Yeah, Trevor Bain is trapped in the pit lane. He's trapped. He's like stuck halfway out of his box. So that is a very interesting glitch right there. This Martinsville race is throwing everything at me so far, but we're third. Jimmy Johnson's the leader. He is a chaser. We just set our fastest lap of the race. So you'd hope that we can really start getting after it now that we're in clear air and make up four and a half seconds on the leaders in the race. But it looks like they're in heavy traffic. So if we can, you know, Spiller. properly get through this traffic, or the, the two lappers here, we're going to be in good shape because I can see Edwards and I can see Johnson and they are both really, really trapped in traffic. So get right up next to the wall. That was a green lap. And they are just slamming into each other up there. Lots of tire smoke. Retired Scott will be the final car I'll need to ta pass before I can get up into that group. So let's see if we can get him here. Around the outside, around the outside and pass Brian Scott. So 56 laps to go, and there are cars getting spun in the middle of the pack there. But not quite to the point of needing a yellow. Johnson and Edwards are side by side with Danica Patrick in the mix. As we're gonna break really late into there. Underneath David Reagan, and Jimmy Johnson leaves the bottom open. Oh, you tried to, you tried to block me, Johnson, but it didn't work. I do. Do I look like Kyle Larson to you? You can't block me. You can't block me. And we get down into the lead past Carl Edwards, and now through the traffic, it's time to go. It's time to build up a lead now, as we've got 54 laps to go. Probably one, maybe one and a half more pit stops to make as we get up into the wall, but I do not care at this point. I want to keep going and get up past these lappers Spiller. and grow a lead as we pass Kane, lap Kane once again Spiller. hard on the brakes as uh, Kurt Kyle Busch was very slow there jump off the Spiller. wall just a little bit and run Kyle down into the corner run into Casey Mears bounce off of Casey Mears and there we go down the main straightaway Try to keep him in front of Paul Menard, not going to happen. And there's Eric Almarola, who restarted this race on the in the lead. But clearly his strategy not working out quite as well as he would have hoped, because he's down to 15th as we get around him. And not Landon Castle, because Landon Castle decided to drive Miller. like a complete grandma off of the corner. And we're going to get into third gear for no reason, because I jammed on the brake so hard I actually downshifted. That's not possible in a real race car, but it's certainly possible on an Xbox One controller. As we get down here, right next to the curb, that was so close right there, and off of the corner once again, wreck in turn two, so I don't think that's what I did, but who knows, don't see anybody crashed in turn two, so we'll continue green, only 1.4 seconds ahead of Jimmy Johnson, wish I would have been able to get through the traffic just a little more effectively to really gap him, but now we start to get some serious pace as the field spreads out, at least where I am. And we're passing Eric Jones for uh, the, thir the 32nd on his name doesn't refer to his uh, position in the race. It refers to how many times we've passed him. But we'll do it again. And Brad Keselowski is in the pits. So that would make me assume that pit stops for our sequence of cars is going to be coming very quickly as uh, Hamlin got up in the wall there in turn two. 
but uh, pretty much everybody is going to have damage by the end of this race. I think this is just one of those kind of argy bargy races. Is, uh, I'm not sure what Brian Blaney was trying to do there, but uh, he was trying to wreck me. As you saw, Brad Keselowski have trouble with the six of Trevor Bain. And I feel like that may end up screwing me when we end up having to come into the pits. I'm hoping a yellow will come out and remove Trevor Bain's car, but we'll have to wait and see as we get down underneath Hamlin and Dillon. Now to the inside of Annette, and yeah, actually no, that's Keselowski in the pits, but it looks like Bain is now across the center of the track, which uh, is a little bit disconcerting. I'm hoping they'll ghost his car or something as we get into the back of Michael Annette. And he's going to have trouble getting into the corner as Hamlin's going to sneak underneath him. We're still two seconds ahead of JJ, so no problem right now from that front. Just don't hit that curb, David. You're going to be in a world of hurt if you do that. 44 laps to go. Fuel mileage. Seven to go on the fuel. So seven laps to go until we find out how bad Trevor Bain is going to screw us in the pits. We'll just have to wait and see as we get down here underneath Denny Hamlin. And that was a pretty nice move, pretty slick. And Keselowski is still in the pit, so I don't know what's going on there. He may be damaged. So I guess it really doesn't matter that I wrecked him 100 times because he wasn't going to make it to the end anyway. At least that's my justification. In fact, both of the Penske cars are in the pits. I just saw Joey Logano as well. So that's unfortunate for Penske. Both of their cars out of the race, or at least out of contention. Ooh, that was so close. I almost completely screwed myself there, and a lot of the leaders are in. So hopefully they will remove Trevor Bain by running into him when they exit the pits. Or if Trevor Bain is ghosted, then we don't have to worry about that anyway. As we get off of the corner, off of turn two, I shouldn't say the corner, but we've probably got a lot of fuel on board as compared to the rest of these guys. Uh, yeah, five laps, so it's all good in the hood right now. In fact, we've lapped the field up to Clint Boyer right now. So that is very good. 13 seconds ahead of Clint Boyer to be precise and growing, so Clint Boyer may be in the pits or he's just in heavy traffic as we get down to the inside of Regan Smith. And the, yeah, they did have to run into Trevor Bain, but they got him out of the way. So hopefully Bain will not be a problem when we come into the pits as Clint Boyer comes in and we lap the field. Officially lap the field. In fact, we've got two laps on Jimmy Johnson, the second place driver. And coming up to put a third lap on Kurt Busch. As we lock up the brakes a little bit there into turn Number one, and actually we're, we've got most of the field three laps down now because McFlurry is eighth, and he is Miller. now three laps down as we pass him. 37 laps to go. McFlurry trying to wreck me, but we're not going to take that. No, we ain't going to take it. As everybody gets all kinds of squirrely there in turn one. A lot of these guys, or turn three, a lot of these guys very slow at this point. Again, it's like the 34th time I've lapped Michael McDowell as we get down here into the corner. In fact, Keselowski may be trapped in the pits by uh, Mr. Trevor Bain as we get, whoa, into the wall there. So we lap Clint Boyer, hopefully. Get her down and woed down and to the outside of Clint Boyer and he's slow off of turn four. So we'll pass him. 35 laps to go. Are we going to need to pit at some point? Okay, three laps to go on the field. Still not needing to come in yet. We're definitely going to make it to the end of the race on one more stop, so that is a really good thing. Just got to keep Clint Boyer behind us here until we get up to this slower traffic here. And I think Boyer will get caught. But he's going to make it to the inside. Pass and make that move, so... That's a shame. But he gets trapped behind Eric Jones, but Eric Jones is gonna, whoa, as we get Clint Boyer loose, the fuel alarm is on, so into the pits I'm about to go. 
So here we go. I've got to make sure I get it down to the 30 miles an hour speeding limit. And just be nice and easy. I don't need to rush this because I think we'll be pretty good. Slow down. So into the pits we go. Four tires, two cans of fuel, and then we'll be ready to race to the checkers to hopefully lock ourselves into the chase. I did see a car get spun out in turn one as we were driving down the pit lane, but uh, we got by Trevor Bain all right. So 15.4 seconds and we're out of the pits. And still in P1. Still in P1. 3.5 seconds ahead of Jimmy Johnson. And now on fresh tires, we are gonna be really golden here. 31 laps to go. We just got to stay ahead of Jimmy. That is it. That is the key to everything Miller. right now. We get into the back of Kevin Harvick. Just absolutely ram Kevin Harvick the whole way down the straightaway. Miller. I'm going to run the outside line. Maybe. Yeah, we will. They have to be so careful about these lap cars now, especially when they've got these faster guys on fresh tires trying to work through them. It becomes very, very hectic, like a Le Mans prototype trying to go by a GT2 car. It's just going to be very, very... Lots of cars going for the same retail space, but uh, at the same time, all reaching those uh, that place at different speeds, and it ends in a right mess most of the time, but... Right now, everything is looking pretty peachy. I'm going to get down here underneath Truex because Kurt Busch is going pretty fast. Harvick tried to, I'll do the, or not Harvick, uh, Kenseth tried to Kenseth me, but he ended up screwing himself. So good for him. Happy for you, Kenseth. Good, good, good on you. So we get out of turn number four. Really nice grip on these new tires. To the outside of Kurt Busch, we try to go. It didn't quite work. Just to make sure, yeah, 35 laps of fuel. We are easily going to make it on fuel. So it's all about just getting the car to the end now. And again, not losing 2.8 seconds to Jimmy Johnson, which I think we should be able to do. And then that will be locking in to the uh, final four at Homestead. And then we'll be able to see what's going to happen in the last episode of NASCAR Heat Evolution. It's been a long and tumultuous road, that's for sure. Tumultuous. There we go, that's a better way of pronouncing that. And will it possibly end in a championship in our second season? We'll just have to wait and see, but it's going to be a little bit longer. We're not counting our chickens yet. We need to race for it. Okay, so we're restarting on the pole position. J uh, Clint Boyer is in second. And uh, a couple guys pitted. So we're going to see how this goes. But obviously we have really good acceleration. And leave the field for chips, really, as we get down here in turn one. Whoa, come on, car. Get down there. Okay, now we go. Now we go. We have nice clear track. First time we've really, truly had clear track all day. So it's really time to make the most of it. As Jimmy looked like he was going to have a really good run there for a little while. But again, my line through the corner is a little bit different. It's definitely slow and fast out. And the AI run fast and fast out, or fast and slow out, but it didn't work that time. We're going to have to keep Jimmy behind. Oh, dang, I really screwed up there. Okay, it's a battle. I'm going to try to get, get Jimmy pinched down to the bottom of the track. That didn't quite work, but again, three and four, I think we're going to be a little bit better. Johnson came in for tires. So that's why he's a little bit faster right now. Gonna bash into the back of him. Bash into him again. That is that is NASCAR racing at its finest right there. That is, that is how you do it. That's a bump and run, even though we didn't quite pull it off. Now here we go into turn three. We're going to do it again. Maybe. Actually, I may just be able to pull around the outside of him. Let's see. There it is. Oh, yes. What a move. Holy cow. 
and we just got it right in front of Jimmy Johnson and just scraped the wall in doing so. What a fantastic duel this is as we just keep Johnson behind us as now it may that may have been it that may have been the dagger in the heart to Jimmy Johnson's challenge here at Martinsville but we'll see again I didn't get a very good exit off the corner that's where I have to make up all of my speed when I don't get a good exit I don't you know they get a much better entry stay off that curb David stay off that curb 12 to go 12 laps to hold on to this one and Jimmy's back there he's back to the inside here he comes holy cow the crowd is going nuts here at Martinsville we're gonna go side by side he's gonna use that inside line I'm gonna use the wall to get around the corner and here comes Carl Edwards he's also looking to the inside and Carl Edwards is gonna get around so I really shouldn't have bashed into the wall that was a not a good strategy call there by Mr. Land now we're gonna get down here into the corner bash off of Carl Edwards he's gonna lose it Carl Edwards loses it and that's gonna bring out the yellow so another restart let's rack him up and go again okay to the outside of Jimmy Johnson we go Jamie McFlurry got the free pass and uh, you know you know we can get these restarts so let's go once again another good restart but it's all about getting this corner these first couple corners right and certainly the exit off of them so there we go good first exit decent second exit not as good as I would have liked but Boyer has gotten around Johnson so that's what we need to do that's what we need to happen right now but again it's a win and you're in situation so Clint Boyer winning doesn't do anybody any good except for maybe Clint Boyer as we get down into the corner work our way around the bottom of the track and out next to the wall white flag can we make it to Homestead off of turn number two one corner to go nice and easy nice and easy here comes Boyer to the inside it's not gonna happen we are gonna go to Homestead in our second season of NASCAR heat evolution fantastic so there it is first place and a ticket to Homestead for the championship decider there is the results a lot of guys a lot of laps down this was an attrition filled race but this is gonna be real sweet all this money big big time purse for this race and uh, the primary sponsorship kind of looks uh, kind of pales in comparison to the rest of the money that came in from this race from all of the other secondary sponsors Wow Wow one million dollars and a trip to Homestead that, that's pretty that's a pretty good little uh, deal right there and as you can see we go into the top but again we easily advance into the final four so let's head back to the race shop and see if anybody's gonna offer us a sponsor for the Homestead race but first we need to look at the grandfather clock which we get to bring in to our uh, lives I'm sure I've got a shelf space somewhere I can put that all right now let's see if anybody's gonna offer me a title sponsorship for my grandfather clock so from Martinsville we're gonna go on to Texas where we can just race for fun uh, especially for these next two races and Danica Patrick says you're starting to figure out this NASCAR thing tweet me again Danica when you figure out this NASCAR thing huh all right so <laughs> That was a terribly mean thing to say. That was a mean thing to say. I should not have said that. But anyway, I just want to look at this one more time. Oh, not the sponsor. I don't want to look at the sponsors. The sponsors already paid me. I don't need to worry about it. There you go. The points leader, advancing to Homestead. We'll see you at Texas. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Texas, baby. Let's go for a win.